Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Herrera and I'm a developer relations engineer here at Datastax. And today I'll be walking you through a resume assistant app called Resume AI that I built using Datastax AstroDB and Langflow. Now, if you're not familiar with those two tools, do not worry, we'll be walking through each of them today. But if you are into building Gen AI apps, then for sure stick around because this might interest you. Now, let's go ahead and first set this scene. This is Resume AI. Now, at first glance, you might think, what does it do? So imagine you are in the job hunt and you might be going through some job listing sites such as LinkedIn, for example. Now, let's take someone who is a software engineer at the moment. So John Doe here, and he has some experience lined up, software engineering experience, developer, um, education in computer science, and of course his skill set. Now, if I were John Doe and say I wanted to move career paths and go into something like product management, I would go to a job listing site and I would type in product manager. And then you'd see that all of these come up and you can click into them. You can see about the job. You can see um, different qualifications that might be needed from them as well. Each of these listings have something like that. Now, granted, the background for a software engineer and a product manager, there are definitely some overlaps, right? There's some level of technical aptitude. Um, there's some experience that you might need with working with a technical team, cross-functionally, et cetera. Um, but of course, there are other requirements and qualifications and just day-to-day -day tasks that differ between the two roles. So if I were John, I would have to kind of go back to my resume and tweak this a little bit to go and to have it tailored towards a PM role rather than a software engineering role. Now, this is where something like resume I would come in. If I were John, I would go to Resume AI, I would type in Product Manager as my desired role, and I would upload my resume. So just making sure this is the same one. Yep, Software Engineering. And press Submit. And Resume AI will do three things. We should expect three outcomes here. So the first thing is return back similar jobs that match my current resume. Now what this does is just level set me. What is my re current resume actually returning back? Um, what kind of jobs would I actually appeal to right now? And the second thing it does is return recommendations and improvements um, on how I can apply that to my current resume. So maybe I should add more skills or maybe I should um, change the wording here things like that. And the last thing, which is actually a cool part, is that it returns back an adapted draft of your uh, current resume using the recommendations from two and one. So these are all really helpful things if you are in this situation. Um, and this is all done with generative AI and built in the back end of resume AI. So let's go ahead, go through this output step by step. Um, so of course, the first thing, the first outcome was the job match results. So as you could see here, it says currently I would match to a software engineer role, um, a full stack engineer or a senior developer, which in this case for myself or for John, this is good because if I were to apply to the software engineering roles, my resume would be optimized for that. But how is this happening? How am I getting um, results just like this? We'll actually go into AstroDB to check out what that looks like. Now, AstroDB is Datastax's vector database. So we will go into one of our databases here and click into this job listings collection. Now, what this is, it's actually a scrape of a LinkedIn job listing post between the years of postings, I should say, between the years of 22 and 23. So this is a pretty hefty data set. Um, if you're interested in looking at this data set, it's here on Hugging Face, and it was actually a public data set that I found on Kaggle. Um, but we loaded it here into AstroDB. So you should see there are job titles here and content, which is essentially the description that we saw in the LinkedIn listings here. So very similar to what you'd see here is basically chopped down and put into a more structured looking output a uh, structured looking data set, I should say. So you might notice here that the job titles are not in a particular order. So we have senior software engineer and we have nurse and then we have delivery driver and then we have attorney. So out of order. If I go here to the vector hybrid search and type in product manager, then I should expect that there are job titles here that would come up 
similar to Product Manager. So let's see if that happens. And just as we expected, we have some job titles with Product Manager come up. So Technical Product Manager, Product Manager, Program Project Manager, you get the idea. And now let's try that with Software Engineer. So we should assume that Software Engineering roles would also come up here as similar, uh, top similar responses. And it does, right? But what if we do the opposite where we describe ourselves as you would in a resume? So I can put something similar to John Doe's resume, um, junior software developer at Innovate Tech, uh, Python programming language experience, BS in computer science. Now let's see and observe the output for this. And as you notice, there's actually similar responses that come up as well and a little bit more tailored, I would say. So we have software engineer, we have now C++ developer with Python. Um, we also have backend Java developer. So not just software engineer, software engineer down the line. Um, so this is what we call, and this demonstrates a vector search. So essentially in resume AI, what it's doing is then vectorizing the resume that you have submitted and taking that data and doing a vector search to return to you the best results that would match your current resume. So that's outcome one. Outcome two is how to improve your resume. So giving suggestions here. Um, so for example, we have a line with a product manager role by, um, giving more examples with product life cycle management, um, emphasize more skills, um, things like that, missing qualifications. So, and then we get actually a likelihood score, four out of 10. So if I had a, if I apply to a product manager role with this resume, probably four out of 10. And this, this is just a, a very subjective judgment. And then we'll actually hop over as well to um, outcome number three. And we see the adapted resume as well. So if I actually bring over do, do, do. If I bring over John Doe's resume from earlier, I can now compare the two next to each other and see that it actually went in and changed some things based on the recommendations that it gave. So in the beginning, we see um, our, it added another layer here to our experience. So led a team of five developers in a project. So something more along the lines of a PM's role. Um, and then if we actually scroll down to skills, it added product manager as a skill. And then it also said some certifications and projects that could help with uh, a PM role if you're applying to a PM role. So let's backtrack for a second. In outcome one, we did a vector search using AstroDB. Um, in outcome two and three, what are we doing here? So this is where Langflow comes in. So if we go back into our AstroDB um, dashboard here, and you can go down into the drop down and click into Langflow. So Langflow is a visual low code AI app development platform. So I can actually go into my resume AI flow and show you the whole process or the basically the back end of resume AI from end to end. And you can also build this yourself. So notice how each of the blocks here have a step associated with each one and they align with the outcomes that we mentioned over in the demo of resume AI. So What's great about Langflow is that we have a component sidebar here, and each of these components can actually be dragged and dropped to this playground over here or, um, or kind of design space. And I can go in and use these and iterate through them. It's, it's actually really great. So for example, before we actually walk into the flow, you can go to this dropdown called models and you might see that there are a bunch of providers here that you can choose from. Um, you can go into tools and see what other tools. So anyway, there's a lot of components here that you can use, but let's actually go in and talk about what those components do. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to step one. In step one, you see we are actually receiving those two inputs that we asked from the user, which is the text input of the user's desired role and then the resume that they are uploading. And from there, we are parsing the resume data, as I mentioned earlier, and we are putting that 
into OpenAI just to get back a, um, a markdown version of it. Now that helps with later on when we are building the adapted resume. So we'll go into that a little bit later. But let me highlight step four here, vector similarity search against the resume data and the job listings collection in AstroDB. So it's taking the parse resume data that puts it into plain text. So your resume is uploaded in PDF and then it converts it into plain text and then it puts that into AstroDB. So if you remember the hybrid vector search box that we demonstrated earlier, that's basically what it's, it's putting that into there and then it's returning the results or the top five results that um, we see from that. In each of these components, they have an inspect. So I can actually go in and inspect what the output looks like for my um, vector search, for my vector similarity search. And then after I get the results, I parse it again into plain text and then put it into a prompt. Now the prompt is what does all the magic for the most part. Um, it outlines each of the three outcomes that I've mentioned earlier. So the first thing would be job matching. The second thing would be resume improvements. And the third thing would be the adapted resume. So what I'm doing here in this prompt is I'm telling the LLM or the language model, the large language model, what I want it to do. And I'm trying to do it in the most clear and concise way. So I give it three variables that are important to the prompt to getting the right data that it needs to actually build the response, um, such as the resume of the person that is using the app. Um, the job matches that we got back from our vector search using AstroDB and the desired role. And I take all of the data and all of the information from those three things and I use the LLM to kind of build the recommendation piece as well as change the, um, change the features of the markdown uh, version of the resume and then return the adapted version at the end. And the output of this gets populated if you can inspect here. So now we have the um, resume um, markdown version populated. We now have the job matches inserted here. So you get the idea. And all of that is sent to OpenAI as a prompt. And then we get an output. So it looks pretty simple, right? And it honestly really is. Um, each of these components represent an actual functional piece of the Gen AI backend. So what you see here is not just a visual or design kind of tool. These actually function and work. And you can do so by going into the playground. And I'm going to clear this session here just so we have a clear space. And I'm going to give my same example, right? Product manager. And let me click out here for one second just to show you that here is where I put in my resume. So there's a resume upload or there's a file upload component that I can bring in and then I can actually put in the text. But in this case, we can test it in the playground. And again, I will put in product manager and then press send. So what we should expect here is the same exact output that we saw in resume I but here in the playground. And what that just shows is how we were able to do this with the components that we saw in a very low code, easy to understand, drag and drop, more visually words that are explaining this way. Um, so let's go ahead and see the results for this. And what's really cool about Langflow again is that you can easily iterate very quickly between each of the components, um, which is great about the uh, drag and drop features. Awesome. So this is the output, right? We have the job matching results, again, similar to what we saw earlier. We have our resume improvement suggestions, um, our likelihood score, and the adapted resume. So all of this is in the back end of resume I that we just saw earlier. And I did host resume I on Streamlit. So if you want to see more of how this was connected um, using Streamlit components to display the text box and the upload feature, then you can go ahead and um, navigate to my resume I GitHub. Um, but furthermore, you can actually export this as a API. And not only just an API, you can actually just export this as a JSON blob and then use it in your Python code. 
So just to wrap up here, we built Resume AI using Gen AI tools like AstroDB and Langflow. And you can check this out too. Go to my Resume AI GitHub and test it out yourself or go to the Streamlit app and test it out yourself. Um, but we are really excited to see what else you can build. And I hope you walk away from this video understanding Gen AI just a little bit more. Um, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.